The Ford Tractor Wheel Brake and Axle Assembly. This video is brought to you by Just 8 Ends Ford Tractor Parts and Restoration Service. This video applies to tractors built from 1939 to 1953. Start by identifying the axle housing. Two different housings were used on Ford tractors. They can be differentiated by inspecting the castings near the flange end. The original housing is shown on the left and is used on tractors with serial numbers 245260 and lower. At serial number 245261, Ford decided to incorporate an oil seal on the housing. The seal required a recess cut into the housing, but as this would weaken the casting, Ford reinforced the casting with a thickened boss on the bottom. This configuration became known as the cat's belly housing and is the one depicted in this assembly. Press a bearing cup into the differential end of the housing. From the opposite side, insert the lower length support shaft with a lock nut and washer. Fasten the lower length support with a washer, castle nut, and cotter pin. Put a brake cross shaft bushing in the housing and mount the driving gear thrust block with two hex bolt and lock washer sets. Although not shown in this video, it is assumed for the remainder of this procedure that the axle housing is mated to the center housing. In the wheel end of the housing, press an oil seal into the recess if required. Be certain the oil seal is facing the correct way. The opened end of the seal faces inward. Press a bearing on the shaft followed by the rear axle gasket. Install the shaft through the wheel end oil seal and on to through the differential end oil seal. Now assemble the brake actuating camshaft. Slide the camshaft hole cover and cover spring to the cam end, then install a woodruff key in the shaft and fix the camshaft lever to the shaft in the orientation shown. Clamp the lever to the shaft with a bolt and lock washer. With the brake pawl facing as shown, attach it to the lever with a clevis pin and cotter pin. Install the brake camshaft into the axle housing. Place a shim over the axle and then assemble the dust shield. Place the dust seal into the groove of the shield and snap the brake adjusting hole cover into place. Now assemble the bearing retainer and cup assembly. For tractors with serial numbers 486, 754 and higher, press in an oil seal as noted. Ensure that the oil seal is facing the correct way. The opened end of the seal faces inward. Note that this seal is only used for the serial number stated. Press a bearing cup into the retainer. Mount the bearing retainer to the axle housing with two bolt and lock washer sets in the top and bottom holes. The axle end play must now be adjusted. Proper end play is achieved when the axles rotate in opposite directions. To do this, adjust the number and thickness of the shims until the axles just begin to rotate opposite to each other. A cutaway shows how this works. 
By removing the center housing from view, and then the right side of the differential, the ring gear, and then the left side of the differential, and finally the spider gear, the right and left hand axles are seen as installed without any adjustment. Note that without the additional shims, the axle ends are in contact. When this is the case, turning one axle turns the other in the same direction due to the friction between their end faces, and the spider gear turns in unison with the axles. This situation is undesirable as the tractor cannot turn if the real wheels do not rotate at different rates. That is, from the point of view of one axle, the other axle is rotating in the opposite direction when the tractor is making a turn, because the inside wheel of a turn must rotate slower than the outside wheel. When shims are added, a gap is created between the axles. Now when rotating the left axle, the spider gear differential gears rotate, and the right axle is rotated in the opposite direction through the spider pinion gears. If the axles require additional shims, remove the two bolts mounting the bearing retainer, remove the retainer and dust shield, add another shim and reinstall the components. Check the end play and repeat adding shims as necessary. Note that the shims only need to be added to one axle to adjust the gap. When the axle end play is correct, mount the brake assembly with the brake adjuster towards the rear of the tractor. Ensure that the brake adjuster is installed correctly. The teeth of the adjuster are near the lower brake shoe and the adjuster nut should be screwed on completely. The tangs of the brake actuating camshaft fit in the gap between the brake shoe plates. For tractors with serial numbers 486, 753 and lower only, Install a gasket and oil seal. Mount the oil seal with two bolt and lock washer sets in the top and bottom holes. Insert four brake support plate studs through the support and torque with four hex nut and lock washer sets. Assemble the wheel hub by pressing eight fluted shoulder bolts into the wheel hub. Slide the hub on the axle and fasten with a washer and axle nut. Lock the axle nut in place with an axle nut snap ring. Place the brake drum on the axle and fasten with two countersink screws. Mount the wheel and tire assembly with eight lug nuts and the assembly is now complete.